Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, human frailty has never been a thing to hold back genius or caliber of spirit. And you know, if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you're in the seats with once more, as always. My name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of entertainment industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And you know, if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you do, because uh, quite frankly, you're listening right now. Uh, and if you are, uh, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, give us your five-star rating, and hit that like button on your podcast provider of choice. Uh, we're available pretty much everywhere. Places like Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. And plus, we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In The Seats YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we would absolutely appreciate it. Also, don't hesitate to check us out on social media. We are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, and we're on Letterboxd for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, Please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca, for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large, because if we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, guess what? We'd love it even more when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So please, pay us a visit. On this episode, boy oh boy, we got a fun one. We are diving into some streaming in Apple+. Plus. One of our favorites. If you haven't already signed up, please go sign up for the Apple TV Plus streaming service now because right on there right now is a brand new documentary called Still, a Michael J. Fox movie from director Davis Guggenheim. Uh, and it's it's the story of Michael J. Fox, man. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's told in his own words and he's in it. And it shows us not just sort of the arc of his career and his comedic genius and how brilliant and how funny the man truly is and still is but also how he didn't let this uh, debilitating disease that he you know contracted of parkinson's disease uh bring him down he 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 still worked he still does good work he has raised so much money for research on that horrible disease and he is uh it's he is a fascinating fascinating guy it's it's kind of amazing to see when you see one of these comedic minds sort of unfiltered. And it's such a fascinating disease because his brain moves so fast, his body just can't quite keep up either. It's it's sad, but there's also a real layer of inspiration to it as well. And that's what, uh, that's what this film really is all about. That's why Michael agreed to do the movie. And we had the unique pleasure of sitting down and talking with uh, director Davis Guggenheim, as well as the editor of the film, Mr. Michael Hart, about uh you know getting the ball rolling starting the process doing it all and uh sort of things they learned and challenges they're in and we had a fun conversation but uh like i've already said if you haven't signed up for apple tv plus go do it now so you can watch still a michael j fox movie but first enjoy our conversation with davis guggenheim and michael hart because between you and me it's a darn good one all right well davis michael obviously first off just thank you so much for the time today i mean and guys congrats on the film it's a hell of a piece of work Thank you. Thank you. Now, I mean, Davis, I guess my first question is for you. And I mean, this is the proverbial sort of chicken and the egg question. Like, did you call Michael? Did Michael call you? How did this ball start rolling? It's funny. We get asked this question almost every interview. And it, I, I wish the answer was more exciting or dramatic. But I read his books and I called his agent. They said, Michael would love to have a Zoom with you. I was like, I'm really into this. He, get, he goes, great, let's do it. And uh, and then we we're off to the races. I mean, he he... Well, Michael was such a pleasure the whole way through. He totally got what we wanted to do. And, and, and he's, you know, the only thing he said to me the whole time was no violin. <laughs> and the only thing I said to him was, I didn't want to make a film about Parkinson's. That was on our first Zoom. That's the only thing we talked about. And I was like, look, it's, it, there's so much more here. You know, and I want, I want that, that story of what he, what he goes through which includes Parkinson's to be more universal. No, and I mean, there's sadness to it, but I mean, there's universal, like there's, 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 there's pride. And I mean, there's universal joy to it as well. And I mean, in just watching Michael, I mean, I was so struck by just, I mean, not just what he has to deal with the disease, but just, I mean, I kind of like, and I'm a Canadian, so I'm almost ashamed to admit this, but I mean, I had forgotten how fast he was and how witty he was. And I mean, I'm kind of curious on the, those first sit down interviews, 
Like, how quickly did you know, okay, we've got something here? What do you think, Mark? You want to answer that one? Or? Oh, in the edit? I mean, I, uh, we hadn't uh, planned on doing interviews for the documentary originally, which sounds kind of silly when you see the, the final piece. And I had constructed a, a kind of rough cut, say, of his audiobooks and archive from life. And we were playing around with material, and it was an hour and a half long. And we had a few gaps. And so Davis decided to, well, maybe, you know, the, from the audio, they'd cut out some parts of a story from the audiobooks that we really wanted to cover. And um, uh, Davis decided to interview him to fill in the gaps, you know, because there were small gaps there. But the next day I get a I get a call from Davis, say, checking out the interview, see how what you think of it. And um, it's hands down the best interview I've ever had the pleasure of editing was easily and I was just blown away by how funny he was and I mean immediately from the second the interview starts he was just honest um and it never felt forced it wasn't like he'd rehearsed it um it just felt so real I mean it's a huge it's, it's a testament to Davis's ability to ask the right questions and to be to build relationships with someone but he was he's a phenomenal interview and if you think about it one guy, it's a one-man show for 90 minutes to, to, to tell his story. We don't need talking heads. We never wanted to do them, but we definitely didn't need them because he owns it. And that is a massive achievement for both Davis as the director and, and Michael, the interviewer, um, interviewee. And um, yeah, he's, it's, like I said, I think it was the best interview. I, and I, I think it will be, to the, to the day I day, the best interview I'll ever work with. We didn't know that Michael, Michael J. Fox, what condition he'd be in. No, uh, um, I didn't. I honestly didn't expect him to be as funny as he was, and as and as sharp and as and as. And then we did a we showed a rough cut to a friend early on, and he goes, "God, he's so wise." Remember that? That was the one. Yeah, it's like he's got. He seems so wise. There's so much wisdom in this. So we, yeah. we were surprised, and and you know. Um, and th th there was a moment in that interview where he's, and you see it in the film where he starts to, to talk about laughter. About, and it's such a simple thing. And, and, and he says, you know, laughter is, you can't help it. You have to let air out. And, and it's, it sounds so silly, but it's actually really profound what he's talking about. And actually, when, I, when we got that, it started to, 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 to kind of determine the structure of the film. We were like, this, is, about, this is, a, is a film about laughter. And it's a film about a guy who's trying to find acceptance through laughter and with an audience. And, um, and so a lot of the things that he said, like I said, they were no longer gaps things that he would tell us were complete game changers in the structure of the film and how we would approach uh, the, the kind of last stage of the edit. No, I mean, it's amazing to watch. I mean, it's quite literally the story of a guy who is whose entire life, his brain was going faster than his body, which, I mean, yeah. obviously the, the, that goes to the title of the film. But uh, can you guys talk a little bit just about how you wanted to structure it? Because, I mean, just the use of archival and sort of cutting back and forth between that and recreations, it just, it all felt so seamlessly in rapid fire. Cause I mean, sometimes with stories like this, you know, we can feel like there's a lull. I mean, sometimes it's by design, sometimes it's not, but I mean, here there was no lull. It was just boom, 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 boom. Can you talk a little bit about wanting this to really have an entertaining flow to it? Well, that was, that was Davis's, the first day I met him, he said, I want this to feel like a wild ride. Let's let's do this. And I, that, when I thought of Michael J. Fox, I was like, really? It's quite a thing. I mean, I, I, I was thinking of the film that probably a lot of people are expecting to see. And, and we would have some stuff about the past. But but um, when you take his audiobooks and you listen to how well they're written and how rich they are and how funny they are, they just lent, Davis was right, they just lent themselves to a wild ride. And, and um, we had to, I mean, I'm packing in. 60 years that we start from the start and go right up to, to today and, and it's 90 minutes there, there are no lulls in this guy's life you know it's we had three very and also three very strong acts um and um in terms of the recreation davis do you want to discuss where that began or that was we call it i want it? to hear your version of it yeah <laughs> Well, so we we had a structure, like I said, an audio. It was it was an audio book, and and the question is, that in, in, in every edit, is well, how do we visualize this if if we're using just audio? It's not this isn't a podcast, and um, uh, there were two um, schools of thought, shall we say, which was one to do recreation, and two, I thought we could do this entirely through archive. Um, looking back, neither would have worked. I, I thought for the longest time, I wanted the archive, Davis wanted the recreations. And um, 
we started to just storyboard some scenes. And, and there's a guy in Barcelona, a guy called David, David Navis, who would, I would be in London, Davis was in LA and he was in Barcelona and we would try and find the right time of the day. And he would, we would talk about a scene where Michael, for example, was is in the, um, the moonlighting scene, you know, how do we, how do we, uh, when he's jumping between family ties and back to the future. And in my head, I thought you can do that entirely through archive. But when I look at the scene now, I'm like, there is no way we would have made that scene or the film entirely. What's surprising, and Davis is the first time I've said it to you, what people are responding to, I find the most when I, my friends, when I, when I, when I show it to them, they say, the recreations are amazing. They're, they're, I've never seen them done this well before. And, um, and I was trying to not do that for the longest time, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, you kept you 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 properly threw out my terrible ideas. Yeah, I had some I had some truly terrible ideas. So, um, um, and uh, I was thinking of a few of them the other day, um, but but it was great. I mean, it's like that battle was was productive, and uh, it's interesting. You you start. I find this now like you start with an, an instinct about what a movie should be, and to me, it was a wild ride. You know, the ups and downs of this this incredible life, and and in the end it sort of got there, but how we got there was a complete surprise to me. Mm. And, uh, the, the fortune of, of having Michael Hart coming on board who l just knows those movies so well and was just like dug into the archive with such, such <laughs> obsession. <laughs> no, really. And, um, yep. and then the battle where I would put in storyboards and Michael, you know, and then, we're a time different. So I'd, I'd put them in and I'd wake up and then Michael had taken them out and he's put some, a movie in. And then, and then, and then, and then suddenly, and I, the, the other instinct was no interviews. Like I was, there's no interviews. And then not right away, like in the middle somehow I said, well, let me just interview Michael J. Fox and just see what happens. And suddenly that interview became, mm. and you said this, Michael, we haven't talked about this, but Michael Hart said, it kind of acts like verite, which is a strange thing to say because verite is like when real things are happening and it's not an interview. But in, in a sense, it was because you know you see that he's got one day that he's got a black you know yeah. eye, and or you see that he needs his pills, and so it's Michael. It, he's so My, Michael J. Fox is so present in those interviews that you're kind of living his life with him, even though they're a sit-down interview. Well, I mean, and there is something to say about that, because, I mean, especially there was particularly in the third act, I mean, where, you know, you're showing clips from Spin and he's come out, he's admitted about that he has Parkinson's. And we're seeing as an audience how he's turned, leaned his condition into his comedy. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was kind of the genius moment. And I mean, I'm kind of curious, how was Michael with you guys putting that together and sort of showing that? Because, I mean, on one end, it's it's genius just to see how he did cover it up and how he was managing to sort of adapt to the situation as it was always evolving, especially when he was working. Well, it's, it's Michael Hart, um, who's I call a genius wizard. I mean, I, I would never have imagined that. And if you were to say, like, you're making a movie about a guy who has Parkinson's at work, you would never have that footage because guys and he's hiding it. So you would never. But he's on Spin City and he's hiding it. And so kind of strangely the footage of Michael J. Fox on Spin City and some other movies plays like true archive or plays almost like Verite which is like he's he's at he's at work but he's hiding his left hand you know and mm. that that's kind of it's something that people bring up time and time again and the way Michael cuts it is 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 brilliant and I also had his audiobooks talking about that period of his life so when I went to look at the Spin City material, I kind of knew what I was looking for. I, I mean, I may have been the first person to have done that, which is like, let's look into that. He, he, told, he told the audience this before in a book, but nobody's ever kind of said, okay, let me go look at these and see, see what's happening. And the first, I remember the first few scenes, because he, he specifically talked about season four in Spin City. And I could see it. I, could, I remember in the first episode, I could start to see that he was doing the tricks a lot more than he was in, in season three with pens. And it was, it, it, I find it quite initially, I find it really hard to watch it because I felt like I was the only person in the world that had seen it. I was like, I'm watching something for the first time that nobody's kind of watching with the, these, with, with the, the, this context. Um, and this, you could see the season it, it deteriorated. You could see his condition was, he was struggling more and more with it. As he said, then he ended up in his dressing room, punching the walls, obviously no footage of that. 
but um it was it was kind of it was it was hard to watch i have to say that material and i was watching for weeks mm. um i mean at the end of the day though guys there is such a sense of hope in this film and i mean i'm curious as you've been showing it at festivals i mean davis i was there in toronto uh, last week when you the other week when you had it here in toronto uh just how has sort of the feedback been because i mean obviously when you're putting this together you never know until you know you're putting it in front of an audience yeah it's um to be honest with you i'm still learning like the the uh when it went on this uh, on the service I've been getting, I got, I, I woke up tomorrow, this morning to like 20 emails from, and, wow. and Michael Hart knows, to people I've, I haven't talked to in 20 years. And, and overall, there's just so much love for Michael J. Fox. There's so much. Mm. And, um, and, and I would say overall, people are just surprised. I think they think they're going to see a, a sad film about a guy with Parkinson's. And it's very different than that. So I'm, I'm pleased about that. I mean, at the end of the day, man, this is, this is, this is a reminder of, of true talent and true, ge true genius. And I mean, how even a disease like Parkinson's can't shut it down. I mean, you know, people would think of Ali, but you know, at the same time, like the wit was always there with Ali. Everything was just slowed down. I mean, you, and but we see Michael sort of in the almost opposite who can't slow himself down because his brain goes so fast and he's so rapid fire. It, it's one of those things that at least as just a sort of a general human being, just seeing it, it's, it's really quite inspirational. And I mean, for you guys, is that the hope for this film to really kind of be an inspiration for just people not to give up in, you know, no matter what kind of sort of situation they're faced in? Because I mean, it would have been easy for someone like Michael to just sort of take his money and disappear. But no, he's trying to do good things. He's still trying to exist in the world. You know what I mean? Well, without a doubt. I think, yeah, it's the, the idea of accepting yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah everything and it speaks to, to kind of everyone really i've noticed from the screenings anytime we show it what's funny is that, that he gets a lot of laughter at the top of the film film sorry i say film and um it's the scene with uh in curb your enthusiasm gets such a big laugh <laughs> the point i keep thinking i i thought he's at his at his funniest now what it, after what everything that he went through he's become almost his best self in that moment where he where he gets that it's this roar of laughter i mean is there there's relief there too but but he has honed his craft and he's become totally accepting of himself and and it just that scene it really sticks out every time i watch it but i mean i we'd like to think that we've made a film that people can can are inspired by and davis has made a few of them and, and hopefully this is another one yeah I, it's funny i i feel like I hope people are inspired, but I don't want people to think that that's what the movie is, yeah. because it's 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 um, it's it's so much more than that, you know. Um, so Man, honestly, but I, but I don't. But I actually don't like. I, I think to me, it's like what I what I think it's 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 a portrait of a portrait of a kind of a of a man you thought you knew. It's it's a portrait of pure entertainment and a pure entertainer. And I mean, I think like Michael said it best. Like, had you been making a sad movie, that would have been boring. Who would have wanted to see that? But I mean, Davis, Michael, obviously, thank you so much for the work today, guys. And again, just congrats on everything, man. It's such a beautiful piece of work. You're welcome. Thank you. And don't forget to to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental or purchasing needs this summer as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs.